Hey guys, here today showing you how to um, replace the intake manifold gaskets on a 1999 Lexus GS400. Um, this would also be helpful if you have to replace the starter on these engines. The starter is located underneath the intake manifold, so um, I'm not doing the starter, but you certainly can use this video to help you get to the starter, which is uh, located in the back. Um, just behind here back here so um, this should work for the 97 through 2005 Lexus GS the LS 400s LS 430s GS 400 GS 430 um, as well as the SUVs like the Lexus um, LX Ford 470s I believe or 450s I don't know what they are but um, pretty much this will work for the all the UZ engines the 1UZ the 2UZ, which is found in all the trucks, and the 3UZ, which is the uh, 4.3 liter. Um, the manifolds vary, sl they vary slightly, but you know, removing them is pretty much the same process. So, um, you will have to remove the fuel lines. So, what I like to do is to start the car, and I like to pull out the fuel pump fuse so that I run the line dry on purpose. So that way when you open it up later, it won't be under pressure and spray fuel all over the place. So um, if you go right over here into the um, fuse box, you'll see a fuse labeled EFI. In this case, it's, um, I don't know if this will zoom in on it. This fuse right here that says EFI on it. Um, I'm gonna pull that fuse out. I'm gonna start up the car and I'm gonna come out here and pull that fuse out. And then obviously if the car has no fuel, it won't run anymore, so it'll die. Um, that's exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna go do that now. And you see, just like that, it died right away when I pulled the fuse out, so. Uh, the line should be, you know, they might, they'll, they're going to have some fuel in them, but it shouldn't be under a tremendous amount of pressure. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pop the fuse back in, and then we'll get to the rest of the video here in a minute. Okay, first things you need to do is to jack the car up and put it on jack stands. Um, the next thing you need to do is to drain the coolant um, because you do have to take off these two heater hoses here. So obviously, you don't want coolant spilling around all over the place. Um, I'm not going to show you where it's at. I mean, I can direct you in the direction. If you just reach your hand straight down here in this opening, just straight down to the bottom of the radiator, you can either reach down this way or you can go under the car. There is a small uh, plastic wing nut looking deal. It usually has a small short piece of hose coming off the bottom of it to drain the coolant. Um, it's not hard to miss. It's on the, it's on the driver's side. Um, I'm in the States, so not in Japan. It's on the dri it's on the driver's side uh, of the radiator. You just reach down and uh, twist it open and you'll see coolant start to come out. Also remove the radiator cap and that'll help um, it drain a little faster. So I'm gonna do that first. That way while that's draining, you can work on other things. Okay, so we'll let that drain. Um, so I haven't done one of these in, in a long while, so um, I this is just my way. I'm gonna try and take it off. I will try and leave everything as intact as possible as I always do, so that way you don't have to take off a bunch of unnecessary stuff. Yeah, I might take off something I might not need to and realize it later, but you know, it is what it is. Um, a lot of this stuff is gonna be brittle the plastic is super old. Like I said, this is a 99, so this car is 21 years old now. So um, some things may break, they may crack. Just keep that in mind. And uh, you may have to replace you know, a few connectors maybe, or some old brittle hose and whatnot. So first thing I'm gonna do is take off this air box. Um, there are a few uh, things that it's uh, connected to. Um, the first thing you need to do is to, usually there's a little nipple right here that you can take off. There's a, there's a bunch of hoses that, is con that are connected to it. 
Um, you want to do your best to be careful with this because these things are going to be the most brittle and you're going to break most of the plastic. If you can take off, like for instance on this hose right here, it goes up to the intake manifold. Take it off right here on the intake manifold side because this is a metal line so you're not going to break that. If you try and take it off over here, it's probably going to crack it. So we'll go ahead and take that line off first. Just one hose clamp right here. And you should be able to pull that hose off. like so there's another hose hose right here that goes down to the PCV valve you want to uh, remove that hose off of this box like I said be gentle just like so that one is off and then there's one hose right here in the front that you need to remove as well like so. You want to go on ahead and disconnect this mass airflow sensor. Just squeeze the tab and pull it off. These might be a little stubborn. Just like so. You can just let it hang down to the side. And that should be all the hoses you need to remove. Now normally there is a um, there are bolts holding this down. There's usually a 10 right here, straight down right here, and a 10 in the back that you can see. But for some reason, you can see this one doesn't have anything attached anymore. So the only other thing you'll need to do now is just to loosen up this lid. There's a few clips right here to remove the lid. Oh, one clip in the back. And then all of this will just lift right up out of the way. You don't have to wiggle it off of the throttle body. And then that's it. You can just take this and set this all down to the side. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, I'm going to be working on the um, passenger side of the engine, is um, pretty much whatever you see that's that's in the, the way of you removing the intake manifold, um, you're going to want to take off, at least on this side. So um, this you can leave in place. You need to take off this uh, the throttle cable here. It'll just lift straight out of its holder then you can just move it around and pull it out of the pulley over here and then take it take it out of this bracket that's over here and you can just set that down to the side over there. Um, this hose right here that's on the top, remove it from here and remove it off the motor. It should just pull off like so. You can just lay this down on the front. Um, you will need to disconnect all of the fuel injector clips that just squeeze like the mass airflow sensor did. You also need to remove the engine coolant temperature sensor that's right here on right behind the throttle pulley. This little guy here, and you can just tuck this stuff down to the side. Once again, just be as gentle as you can. Be as gentle as you can, that way you don't um, damage any of the connectors. So there's one injector clip. You can just tuck this stuff down out of the way. Once you remove this stuff, you'll start to see um, you'll start to see where the intake manifold sits at and the bolts that you need to get to. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and remove all these injector clips. Don't worry about this one single wire that goes down, that goes down to the knock sensors, or excuse me, it's either a starter signal or a knock sensor. You just leave it there. there will be uh, some 10 millimeter 10 millimeter screws right here that hold this wiring harness but as you can see this car doesn't have them so um, I should have told you before you start taking off the injector clips to remove these two 10 millimeter screws that are right here okay so all of those are removed and 
and um, this side should be good to go. Um, there is a fuel con fuel line connection in the back here. You can just leave that alone for now. Um, all of this side should be good to go. Um, we'll go on ahead and take our attention to the other side of the motor now. Okay, now we're on the driver's side of the engine. The next thing you want to do is to, same as the other side, just basically removing all of this stuff out of the way. Um, first thing I'm going to do is to take this pipe right here on the back, this vacuum hose, just loosen up the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold down the whole hose. And you can just set this over here to the side, just tuck it out of the way. I like to screw the screws back where they came from, that way I don't lose them. Next thing you want to do is to remove the um, throttle position sensor connector here. It just squeezes and removes just like the other ones. Um, it usually sits in a bracket that's right here. They're just two plastic brackets. Um, you can just remove them. Like these ones are broke, so that's probably why they're not here anymore. You can just set this down to the side. Um, you'll also want to remove this here, this here hose that's coming right here in the front. Just remove it from this only. You don't have to remove it from that. Just like so. If you follow that hose back, it leads back here to the uh, purge solenoid for the EVAP. Um, just loosen this one 12 millimeter uh, bolt right here. You should be able to leave all of the electrical connectors uh, together and you shouldn't have to touch them at all. So in the meanwhile, while I find my 12 millimeter socket, I will take that out. It's in my pocket. Um, yeah, so we'll remove this here 12 that's right here. See, and this loosens that all up so you can pretty much hang this over here to the side or leave it up in the air like that. doesn't matter. It's fine. And then directly behind that we have this guy. I'm not sure what this is exactly. Uh, might be an igniter or a relay or something. But anyway, there is there are two 10s here. Just remove the, the, the 10 that's in the back. And that'll allow you to take this off and just hang it also down to the side. Okay, so this is the main wiring harness that comes right here and it's kind of a pain to deal with because um, it'll be in your way. Um, there are usually uh, three tens that are holding it on. There's a 10 that's supposed to be right here holding it on, but you can see whoever worked on this before didn't put anything back. So all this is already loose. There should be a 10 right here, a 10 right here, and a 10 right down here in the, in the front. So if you loosen all those, oh, and there'll be one more 10 that's underneath this um, PCV valve line, which I'm going to remove right now also. This one might be more, a little bit more tricky to get off. Okay, so we got that guy off and you should be able to kind of tuck this off to the side like that as well. And then you'll see the other 10 for the wiring harness that's right here. So all of this, I mean, you're going to have to just do your best to get around it. Some of this stuff is going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. But if you look directly underneath, there'll also be four injector plugs that you need to undo. So you're pretty much just going to have to do your best to try and um, either get long needle nose pliers to get down there to take them off or if you have small hands you know that'll work as well but um the back ones are not too hard to get at but the front ones are a little bit harder to get at so i'm gonna go around there and reach around and try and get them off the very front one it might be easiest to disconnect the front coil pack first and then disconnect the um and then disconnect the uh, injector. I don't want you to actually remove the coil pack, just, just remove the connector from the coil pack. This guy right here. 
and you should have room to get at the other injector like like so so now all the injectors are loose um, this wiring harness like I said is a bit cumbersome so if you can get the wiring harness up and over this engine hoist like like that um, you should be in business to be able to reach uh, what you need to reach Okay, so the next thing you need to do after getting the wiring harness and whatnot all taken apart is to take off the two heater hoses that are in the back. They're just held on by uh, normal clamps that you can use pliers on. Um, this one is a little bit easier to get to. The other one's probably a little more difficult, but um, you gotta get, get those both off. Might be a little bit of water from the heater core in there, but that's okay. Okay, so after you got the two heater hoses off, um, you can go on ahead and remove the driver's side fuel banjo fitting that's right where my finger is at this is the this is the fuel line right here this black one right here goes down into this banjo fitting it is a 22 millimeter wrench that you need um, don't probably don't try and use an adjustable wrench uh, you can if you're in a pinch but you don't want to strip it out um, sometimes those can be very very tight so uh, I use a little bit of PB blaster before I try to crack it loose but yeah, you want to go ahead and loosen it up and there will be uh, little O-rings that are there. They're usually brass, so don't lose those. Just take it off slowly so that you can get it completely off. out so you can just set this down there's an o-ring that's up here so make sure that doesn't fall off okay so that side is now loose now if you follow this hose back around you'll see another banjo fitting that's on the other side of the motor that looks just like the one you just took off on the back you'll need to loosen and remove that one as well also, right next to this one, there's a 12 millimeter uh, screw that's holding this bracket in place. You probably can't see it in the video. It's right, right here where my finger is. There's a bracket right there. And I don't think there's a bracket on the other side. So, no, there's not. So, once you remove this one bracket right here and remove the other banjo fitting on the other side, you should be able to take the fuel line and kind of swing it up out of the way. Granted, there will be some fuel in it, so just you know, keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the other one now. it looks just like the other one on the other side and there is an o-ring that I'm going to remove okay so we got the got the fuel line out of the way now too and I did exactly what I said don't do and drop this o-ring
Okay, so in this next part, I am telling you that you need to take off the throttle motor connectors. There's a gray connector. There's also another smaller connector that is in the front that you also need to disconnect. X, the throttle body can stay attached to the intake manifold. You don't have to separate them. Um, there will be a coolant hose right here that you need to remove. If you look down under the upper, ra upper radiator hose, there is a connector down there that you can loosen it and remove the hose. So go on ahead and get that off. The connector straight down right there where my screwdriver is pointing at. So I'll go ahead and remove it. You can now see I am trying to wiggle the hose loose. Just take the clamp off and then pull the tiny little hose off. You'll see the hose is right underneath the upper radiator hose when I pull it off. Just a small little hose. Next thing you want to do is remove the intake manifold bolts. They're all around. There are bolts that are on the upper intake manifold. The two small ones, don't touch those. There are other ones that are down farther right here. Those are the ones you need to loosen. They're far down in each hole. I think there's about 10 of them or so. Um, so you will have to loosen them all up. I believe that this bracket is in the way. You will have to remove the two bolt nuts there to to get that bracket out of the way so you can see some of the other bolts. I believe that they are 12, 12 millimeter bolts and with an, an extension and a socket you should be able to loosen them all up. Here I am removing all of the intake manifold bolts. You'll just have to work your way around and look into all the uh, valleys and you will find all of them. I think there are eight of them. There might be ten bolts total, but just loosen and remove them all. I just loosen them up with the wrench and then I use my impact to take them all the way out and I just grab them all with the magnet. So whatever works for you as long as you get them all out. Okay, here I am with uh, my impact, loosening up all the rest of the screws and my long magnet to pull them out of the valleys. Like I said, you don't have to do this. It's, it really doesn't matter how you get them out as long as you get them out. Um, I just find that a magnet is a lot easier to work with rather than trying to reach your fingers down there to get them because it'll be pretty hard with the limited space you have. And here you can see the manifold is now loose, so we should be able to pull it off here shortly. Okay, I got all of the 12 millimeter bolts taken out. There is a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this should now just lift up and you should be able to take it out. It will be a little heavy, but you should be able to lift it out. Well, I guess you do need to disconnect this here connector. And there's also one, um, there is one coolant line right there that you just need to disconnect before you can pull the uh, manifold off. Okay, I got the I got the hose off the bottom down here. I found the easiest way was to spin this clamp around and then grab it from the bottom. So it's, everything should be free now. Okay, so as you can see, the starter is sitting right there. If you had to change the starter, it would be right there. Um, there would just be a few bolts holding it into place. Um, the old the 
old gaskets are here. Um, they simply just come straight up. So go ahead and remove them. Remember which one goes where and how they were oriented. So I'm gonna take it off and set it straight down like it was. And then the other side as well. Um, go on ahead and take it off and set it down as well. Um, you wanna do your best now to you can get a vacuum if you want, clean up all the debris that is around. And um, I use, use a razor blade to scrape all of the excess gunk off, but you wanna wipe all this down as clean as you can get it before you install the new gasket. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this area up. Okay, I got the uh, valley there all cleaned up. I got the new intake manifold gaskets on in place. You can see the new blue ones there. I did install the upper intake manifold gasket onto the plenum. I did that outside of the car, as you remember in the video earlier. Um, pretty much all of the bolts that are on top of the intake manifold, you'll want to remove those. You'll also have to remove the throttle body, and you'll have to remove the power valve that's on the back of the uh, intake manifold. Uh, there's three bolts holding on the power valve in the back. Um, so I went on ahead and do that and did that. Um, like I said, this video is not to show you how to do the upper intake manifold gasket because usually those don't go bad. It's usually the bottom ones, these ones, that fail the most, the most often. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stick the intake manifold back down into place. Don't forget this that small little um, coolant hose that needs to get reattached to the bottom of the throttle body when you stick it in there. And um, aside from that, you'll get the manifold back into place, install all the bolts. All the bolts get torqued down to 13 foot-pounds. Um, if you don't have a foot-pound uh, torque wrench, you can torque them down to inch-pounds. Just multiply uh, 13 by 12, and that'll get you 156 inch-pounds. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get that into place now. Okay, got the intake manifold back on, all torqued down to 13 foot-pounds all around. So pretty much now we're just going ahead and put things back together. I'm going to start where we last left off was with the throttle body connectors. So these two connectors right here need to get reconnected. And also remember if you took off, you took off that little um, coolant hose that's right below the upper radiator hose, that needs to go back on as well. Okay, like so. That's all together. I'm going ahead and put this one back on as well if you want right along the front. Okay, next thing you need to do is to maneuver the fuel line back into place and tighten it back up. Might be a little bit difficult to do this, so just try your best to maneuver it back. Uh, you got it out. Just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up this main side first, and then I'm gonna tighten up that side. Don't forget that you need to put, the O-ring has to go on the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the fuel rail. So there'll be one on the bottom, and the one that's on here will be on top. that one started I'm gonna go ahead and start the other side too okay I got that one started I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them both up now doesn't take much to get them tight that one's tight don't go too far else you'll strip it okay I got both the fuel banjo fittings tightened here and here I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the two heater hoses that go on the back, and then after that, we'll uh, focus our attention on this side of the engine. Sorry, it's windy. Uh, we'll focus our attention on this side of the engine to get the wiring harness, the injectors, and everything else plugged back up. Okay, so we got those back on. So now we can go ahead and focus our attention on this side of the engine to get everything buttoned back up. Sorry, you guys will have to excuse the light. Um, 
obviously it's sunny outside and part of the engine is in there. So I will do my best to explain and try and point to what I'm doing. Um, but right now, pretty much everything is just putting it back on how we found it. So the next thing we want to do now on this side is to reconnect all of the um, injectors and whatever connectors you took there off. Um, so we're going ahead and do that. Remember if you took off the coil pack, the front coil pack, go ahead and reconnect that as well. Okay, so those are all back connected. The uh, throttle bottle, throttle body, or excuse me, the throttle cable and just loop it back over this side. Um, if you remember we took off this one connector right here, it was a 10 millimeter that's right here, so go ahead and reattach that. Um, if your car did have all of the 10 millimeter uh, wiring harness in place for, um, for the, that's holding on the main harness, put those back in. This car doesn't have any of them at all, so I'm not worried about that at all. So. And we can hook this guy back up. Remember, it's a 112 that's right here on top of the motor. Then, um, if you follow the hose around to the front, it goes connected right into the front. And there's also the big PCV valve hose that goes connected right under this one. this guy remember this goes under under the throttle body here or excuse me under the throttle cable actually no it goes on top of the throttle cable and uh, it gets connected to these two 10 millimeter screws right here in the back so all of this side over here is done now on the driver's side we can focus all the rest of our attention on back on the passenger side now okay so back on the passenger side there was one connector that came out from the bottom of the motor and that needs to get reconnected back into place. And all of the, um, all of the injectors need to get reconnected back into place as well. And don't forget the uh, engine coolant temperature sensor right here as well. Um, if you did have the 10 millimeter screws that held on the wiring harness, you can go ahead and put those on. Like I said, this car does not have any of that, so I will not be putting those on. Now is to um, put on the throttle body bracket, or excuse me, the throttle cable bracket, which goes right here. I took it off earlier in order to get room to get one of the intake manifold bolts. So I'm going to and put this guy back on here and those get torqued down to 13 foot-pounds as well okay you can put the throttle cable back into the pulley down here on the bottom first and then you can slip this back into position here like so. Okay, that's all good to go. Now the only thing we'll have to do is to get the air box put back into place in the various vacuum tubes, like this one here in the front, this other one that goes right here on the side, and then there is another, uh, this, if you remember this hose comes around the bottom right here and gets attached to this, this, small nipple right here on the top okay like so and then the other nipple back here goes attached to the air box so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the air box now the air box, air box just slips back into place here like 
so. Gets clipped back onto the air box. Connect the mass airflow sensor. Connect this little vacuum line that's right here in the front. Connect this vacuum line that's right here. This vacuum line gets connected right here. And if you did have the tens that are holding this box down, remember there's a ten right here, a ten right here in the back, and a, and that's it actually. So pretty much the only thing left now to do is to fill up the car with coolant, leave it jacked up like this, fill it up with coolant, start it up, put the heater all the way to max hot, and just put the fan speed to whatever, and just let it idle like this and top off the coolant as you need. Um, again, I apologize for the lighting here late in the video. You know, this uh, the sun came out, and so that's can't really control that. But um, also, I forgot to um, turn my mic on on a portion of this video, so there will be a short portion where I'll just write what's going on in the bottom. Again, I apologize. I just wasn't paying attention. So anyway, besides that, um, if you like the video. Please hit the like button. Thanks for subscribing, guys, and I'll catch you guys next time.